Marie in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Marie. Marie, how's Massachusetts doing? Are we snowing up there? Yeah, there's a snowstorm here. Oh, That's wow. what I'm talking about. How do I know this, Brad? Because you, you follow the weather reports, Squeeze. I follow everything that you has follow, to do with you the You know weather. everything. Yes. Squeeze All does right. everything. No, I like Massachusetts. <laughs> What's up, Marie? Hi, this is the problem. I've been in this country from 1980. Yes. Um... One day, um, my dad brought us here, we have a green card and everything. And um, one day, and I think it was 1993, I was reading the newspaper and I opened up the, the wanted, uh, and I, uh, the court thing, and I saw my name. And it's something the newspaper, about, you see your um, name. yeah, I saw my name for court um, for welfare, what, for owing welfare fraud or something like that. Mm. So I'm like, what? Marie. So Marie. I, Marie. Huh? Marie. Yeah. yeah. Is it possible that there's more than one Marie, whatever your last name is, in the world? What, what's no, that was that's what I'm getting to. Okay. So I, I, I got scared. I said, me? So it was in the evening. So I waited in the morning, and I called the courthouse. They said, they asked me my name, my date of birth, and all of that. And they said, you need to come down to the, co to the courthouse because you have a court hearing today. I said, I don't. They said, wait, wait, wait. No, let, so me, let me get this straight. Let me just understand yeah. what you're saying so far. Get it straight, right? Mm -hmm. You have a green card, you came up, and one day you just pick up a newspaper, and in the newspaper is a newspaper article. And the article says, Marie, whatever your last name is, is wanted for welfare fraud. You say, how could I, what is this, Groundhog's Day? How could I be reading this newspaper? And this says this about me. So I call the court the next day, and they said, yeah, you better get down here. Is that really what you're saying is happening, or am I missing something? Um I'm dead serious. This dead serious. You, you have a way of reiterating in, in things all the time. I'm just double checking what I'm hearing. Okay, let's continue. Yeah, this was years after I was in America, though. But then I went down to the courthouse, and uh -huh. the lady, she, they, I went into the court, and the judge said that uh, they appointed me a, an attorney. And um, when I, um, at that time, the, a, a person, I forgot what they're called, like um, from the, a lawyer for welfare. A court-appointed attorney. No, not the court-appointed attorney, the the, a person from the, the welfare place. The prosecutor. No, okay, what the we, Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Were you found guilty of anything? Yeah, yeah that's the thing. Mm -hmm. um, they, told me, they, they told me that I need to speak to the attorney. So that man from the welfare place came, and I said, he asked me, um, how did I know if I didn't were, know about were, the court? I said, were I brought the newspaper. Were you found guilty of anything? The, the lawyer told me that it's going to be a long and whatever process for me to prove that it's nothing to do Were with me. Were you found so we, guilty of something? Yeah. What? Yeah, and they put me on probation. For they what? said I have to pay for back what? the money so for how welfare. Much, how much money did they make you pay back for welfare? For I what? didn't. I was. I. They, never done they this. told me that it was eight thousand uh dollars. -huh. But then, um, when I went back again in court, because I was saying this doesn't make no sense. So I was she's put found on guilty of something and that she did not do. A certain amount That's what of she money. claims. It sounded like she got a private right. attorney. She was also given notice of a court hearing in a newspaper. So we're taking everything with a grain of salt. We're, we're, we're listening to this, but yeah. Me, oh but yeah, gonna, it yeah. was. And then, and then, because they even sent it to the address that I was living to four right. years prior. That's where they sent the, the, okay, the paper Marie. for the court. Marie, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Is your question about what? what tell me what your so, question is, and let's go backwards. What is the question that yeah, you're calling Okay, about? my question is, um, I, I've, I, I've got my green card, but I want to go for my citizenship. Got it. This is what we're, going, this is what we're, this is what we're going to do, okay? Mm -hmm. You have some sort of arrest or incident with welfare from the 1980s, that we, you yourself, and I'm being honest with you, not 100% certain what happened, okay? Never, ever, 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 ever been arrested. I get the it. Welfare I get it. I, I get it. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to do as your attorney, this happens in Massachusetts. What state did this happen in? Massachusetts. Okay. So what I would like to do, um, and this, uh, what I would like to do is run your, is you come and hire us, okay? And we're going to have mm -hmm. you go and take your fingerprints locally wherever you are in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then we're going to send your fingerprints to the state of Massachusetts and ask them to run your fingerprints and mm -hmm. see if any arrests come up for welfare fraud or for anything else that you may or may never have done in your lifetime. Okay? Mm -hmm. If nothing mm -hmm. comes up, 
then you were never arrested and we're not sure what you're talking about. If something does or, come or up, then, does... then we will look into it. That's basically it. Yeah. Because immigration is going to run your fingerprints. But also, if, mm-hmm. if, if, she, if you run that and nothing comes up, whatever she's talking about could be vacated, right? We don't know what it is, what, what she's talking about. Okay. I don't know what she's talking about. Yeah, so but let's, uh, so the judge, you didn't let me finish. The okay. judge, when I was when I was upset um, because I was on probation and then I got very, very ill because I was working and then I went in and when then- you, well, um, What do you mean you got well, ill well, because well, you were working? I'm trying to, so you one were- One second, one second. I'm just trying to understand the story. She, she went okay, to the judge, I'm, I'm, one I'm second, one second. You went to the judge. And then the judge said this something to you, and then you started working, the and you judge, got ill. What'd you get ill for? No, no, I was working. I'm, 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 I'm in, I was working in the nursing field, and uh-huh. they, I went for a job interview, and they run my record, and they saw that that I had a court thing, um, when they run my record that I was paying back um, money for welfare. So um, I was talking to my the doctor that I was going to work for. He said, you know what, you need to ask to see an appointment with the judge. So I went in front of the judge, and the judge the took it out. He something. said, what did they call that? He said he's going to, you, what you did he to call it? a private attorney. That's, that, All right, that's I, I, I'm now at the doctor made an appointment with the judge. I, I'm, this is what no, we no, do. I Marie, went Marie, into Marie, the court. Marie, 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 Marie. Court appointed, okay. court appointed. Marie, 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 I'm happy to help you, okay? Obviously, there was The some... judge took it out, though. Okay. The judge um, said he's going to, what they call that thing when they... They, um, I don't know. Oh my God. This is the 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 squeeze and Marie show. No, Ex- yeah, vacate. Well, I don't know. Vacate, sponge. Vacate. They said he was gonna. He said we're gonna. Oh my God! What he called it? I don't what know. Years ago. What did he call it? Um, I don't know. But seriously, no. I'm, I'm on, a, on, 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 on a different term. note, if you don't mind me interjecting. Um, Interject, what exa- squeeze. What but exact- she gets insulted when you. What exactly is the question all about? She wants to become a citizen, Squeeze, but we don't. We, we're still trying to discover what happened here. And by the way, thanks for everybody for, for hitting my three hundred. Right? Yes, right. We, 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 she doesn't know what happened. Mm-hmm. There's a whole thing here. So again, let's 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 take dial us back a second, okay? All right. This is what mm-hmm. we know so far. Okay. Mm-hmm. She she w- read in the newspaper that she had to go to a judge mm-hmm. because no, I have of to a, go, to court. go to court for welfare fraud. She mm-hmm. went to court. She had an attorney. The attorney said pay back eight thousand dollars, but she doesn't know anything about this. Then no, she the got. Judge. Then she got. The judge said that. Then she got ill. Then she got ill after working, and then she went to work for a doctor. And the doctor said make an appointment with a judge, and the judge vacated everything. And now you have a clean record. Is I that think what she you're saying? To come to no, you. he didn't vacate it. Um, what the, I, I'm trying to remember the word that he used because it was it would end up on my record for my for you know when you work in the medical right, field. Was it record. sealed? You mean it was sealed? All right, Marie. Yeah, Marie. he said he was going to see. I have the I have the record. Okay. I have all my paperwork. So you need a consultation. Hold you on need an attorney. attorney. You That's need it. Right, yeah, we can go on forever. Yeah. Okay. She needs. Sounds like a needs. great story, though. It was a great story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, very good made for TV got us, movie. Got us to three hundred. Got us to three hundred. <laughs> I have no. I've never heard of any guy but he got to get arrested through a notification by a newspaper article. Thank but, you, you know. so much, Marie. All right. All right. Uh, Ivy. 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 It's six o'clock. My time for me to take my new my evening vitamins. What's up? Jenny. Noel. I can't read yes, any of this. Brad. Noel, sir, what could I do to help you? What's up, Noel? Hey, Brad, how are you? What's up? I just want to tell you thanks, man. I got my green card, man. Oh, wonderful. What happened? I'm so happy. Did I help you? <laughs> yeah, you helped me. What um, did I do for you? Well, you you, you appoint me to Jenny Kim right. and my older. Yeah. And they take care of me, man. Oh, fabulous. You know what you would do? Yep. No, it would be great if you can come in. Are, are you in the New York area? Yeah, I'm in the New okay. York area. This is the best thing that you can do to help me and help help this firm and help everybody out there. Come in. You know what I love to do? I love when the clients come in and they have their green card. Mm-hmm. We, I put their, my arm around them. We shake their hand. They take a picture. And then we promote. Look at, we, look at this man. We've changed his life. Would you be willing to do that? Yeah, uh, but I got to get a time because I was there Monday. Monday, I came and pick it up Monday. Oh, man. Why don't, why don't we take a picture with you? I didn't know because um, I was asking and then she, they brought it to me and I was like, okay, I'll call Brad and tell him thanks, you know, well, for helping I, well, me out. Well, I wish, I wish you would, I would have known. I would have come over and said hello, but uh, oh, congratulations, man. congratulations to you. Can I ask what Thank we you. did? What we did? Can I ask what we did? 
Got him his green huh? card. But I know he got him his green card, but how? I didn't print it in That's the back. That's what you did. I didn't print it in my That's backyard. That's what you did. You got him his green card. What did we do for you? Got him his green card. No, I came in I came in to you and I explained to you that, you know, my mom would die and I was trying to go to Jamaica and then I couldn't go because I got the old, the old one that has no expiration date. Right. And then you said to me, well, you need the, the death certificate. But at that time, I couldn't get it in time to go down. So we just went ahead and just go ahead and file just so renew in the green card. Oh, okay, that was simple enough, but I'm glad that we were able yeah. to eventually... He had a green card that didn't expire. He wasn't able to go, unfortunately, to his mother's um, funeral. funeral. But but you're very happy with the services, and, and we made it very easy for you. Oh, Brad, I'm telling you, thanks very much. Thank man. you very yeah. much. I appreciate you calling. I thank you. No problem, All Brad. All right, okay. And that's what we love, true success stories. Once again, the Brad and Squeeze show right here. Definitely um, on the Brad and Squeeze Facebook live page. Also, don't forget we're on YouTube. Once again, the number is 1-800-529-5465. All right, 1-800-529-5465. That's the number to call. Let's go to Fiona in Brooklyn. Fiona. Hi, Brad. Hi, How are you? Hi Squeeze. Squeeze went to the good. bathroom, so hopefully he'll make it back. I think he had bad fish or something. <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully he'll be back soon. What's up? <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'm, I want to do my citizenship, right. but I have a speeding ticket that I got in 2016, but I have a lawyer on it, but they keep pushing back the date, so it, would it affect my citizenship? Well, my what, is citizenship? The spe- what is the speeding ticket? I mean, was it reckless driving or just literally speeding? Just speeding. Yeah, it shouldn't affect your citizenship because you can be a bad driver and still become a citizen, you know, as right. long as it doesn't turn into some sort of criminal thing. Um, when is your citizenship right. interview? Um, I, I didn't start the process as yet. Okay, start the process. I wanted to make start, sure. start the process because it'll be nine months by the time by the time you become an in, get an interview, your speeding ticket will be over. Okay, thank right. you so much. You're very welcome. All right, good luck. If okay. you need help, hold on. All right, let's go to Chan in New York. Chan. 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 Chan? All right, we'll put him on hold for right now, and hopefully we'll be back to him. Let's go to Christopher in Alabama. Christopher. Yeah, good evening, good sir, Good evening. Brad. What's up? So, squeeze. He went to the bathroom. Hopefully he'll be back. Maybe he's listening. <laughs> oh, Brad. Uh, yeah. This is my situation, man. I got married. Like, I came here like uh, in about two years ago. I got married uh, last year, August, man. And right. Right after I got a DUI, and I was I was, I went to the, that court and they give me they, they well they, you know what happened right there and they I was convicted for that and then right after I was driving again man they give me an ex reckless driving so I'm in a predicament now so I'm, I want to know man what's my way well, forward you, you know what I mean gr- because do you have a green card. No, that's what I want to put okay. in right now. All right, so you got to uh, the DUI doesn't prevent you from from getting your green card because it's a driving under the influence, not a DWI. You have a reckless driving. What is this reckless driving? What, what are you doing in a car? You know you're out of stat. I mean, in all honesty, you know you're out of status. You know you got to really stay within the limits of the law. Why are you doing all this stuff? Oh, but man, where I li- where I live, man, I gotta drive for real. I gotta drive. You I, feel what I'm saying? Because we don't got a bus system. No, 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 no. I know, stuff. I know you gotta drive. But why is this DUI? What is this reckless driving? Why don't you drive more more sanely? Uh, I, it's, it's a long story that is concerned, Brad. But I mean, I I got the charge, so I'm All dealing right. with it. But, okay. So, so the bottom line is this. This is in Alabama? Yes. All right. So in Alabama, I don't know what the deal is with reckless driving, okay? But certainly, you should not file any green card. Don't file anything. Don't file anything with immigration until this is resolved. Because you already have a DUI and you have a reckless driving. By the way, this is Christopher in Alabama. We got it. We got it now. Okay. So don't yeah. do anything yeah. I, I, because I, I went to court. I went. To, I went to court on both of them already, Brad. And what? And what happened were, with they, the reckless they, driving? They fined me two hundred dollars for that. All right. Well, the reckless driving sounds like a traffic infraction, so I think you're going to be okay. The DUI we want to take a look at because you've gone through this twice. I think you should hold on. Let us take a look at your records. I think based on what you told me, if you only got fined two hundred dollars. 
and you have a DUI, I think you're going to be fine to get your green card. But let's double and triple check that. So hold on. What, what, what? Let well, me, the, let well, me, the, okay, well, the, well, the law, well, the prosecutor, Brad, that, um, the judge dropped the court charges and whatever, and he, they just give me a deal to say just pay two hundred dollars. Well, that that and, that sounds like a traffic infraction to me. If I, but maybe I'm wrong. But that's what it sounds like to me. What I would like to do for you, you're in Alabama. I don't know the laws of Alabama off the top of my head, yeah. obviously. Okay, is I yeah, want to yeah. put I want to put you on hold. Have a consultation with us. You're going to send us your dispositions. I'm going to look up the law in Alabama based on what you pled guilty to in these dispositions. It sounds like a DUI, and it sounds like a uh, a, a, a traffic infraction. And I think that's okay. Uh, yeah, a DUI and a reckless driving, two separate cases. Okay, so hold on one second, okay? Hold on. All right. 1-800-529-5465. Daniel in Dallas, Texas. Daniel. Yes. Daniel, are um, you playing Pac-Man? What are you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. It sounded like you were playing video games in the background. No, no. no. Okay, what's up? So grand. Oh, okay, what's I, up? Because your kids. I okay. Have a, I have um, what? Some issues. Mm -hmm. I came into the country 2009, mm -hmm. and I came on a K-1 uh, visa with my, my with my then fiance, then my ex-wife. We were together for four years, and when we you, had a lot of when, when you say you came on a K-1 visa with your ex, you came on a K-1 visa and married this woman who is now your ex-wife? Yes. Okay. All right. Did she file papers for you? Yes. I have my green card okay, on my great. 10 years. Okay, great. So what's the problem? So the problem is um, 2014, I, I filed in for my citizenship, and... Two months later, we had a misunderstanding because I found out she was cheating, but well, I do not have the evidence. Okay. So how'd you find so, out she was cheating if you had no evidence? Just out of curiosity. I, I always like to hear these I saw it on Facebook. So oh, you saw it on Facebook. With her okay. ex ah, Facebook. When mm -hmm. I found out she was um, sending my money right. to her ex husband. Oh, my God. Her ex husband in prison. All right. Okay. All right. Now we know why. So okay. long, long story short, uh -huh. we got into it and the police came and I was charged with... Um, Domestic violence, which was later on dropped. To what? Dropped then, to nothing? No, it was, it dismissed. was dismissed. Okay, great. Yeah. They found out she was lying. Okay, good. So I, we separated, got divorced, and I, I pulled, I withdrew my uh, citizenship. Okay. And the lawyer then that I was using told me, well, since you're not more married to her, you'll file for divorce. You got to wait five Go years. Ahead with, well, so I waited for five years. Right. And I filed, that was 2015, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, 2015. It was delayed for over a year. They said they kept saying, "Come with this, come with that, come with our uh, evidence, go with them another evidence." Right. Finally, they denied the application, and it was based on two things. What they said then, my ex-wife, daughter, yes. filed for this government assistance, uh -huh. and never included my name in it. That, that I has, live in the same but that, but that has, house. That has nothing to do with you. What that's you, what I'm. Okay. That's what I think. All right. So that that's so one, that's a, that's a BS. That's a BS excuse. What's the second one? Of course. Of okay. Course. Then the second one was well, the date you said you live in the house that you moved, you lived in the house. That was uh, the first application. You said you lived from January fourth to June uh, to for four years. Then the second application, you say you moved in there January 14th. So that 10 days shows you a line to immigration about oh, living there. Oh, come on. That, that's, that's BS also. So, the, so okay. The, the so now you have, you have, these, you have both of these, you have both of these decisions, right? Yes. Okay. This is what, and now we're now, in, you haven't tried to file again, have you? Yeah, they told me I can refile, but I just say, you know what? I'm not even doing anything. I've just let it be, let okay. it be. Okay, all right. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want, I'm going to put you on hold. I want okay. you to set up a consultation with me. Before you set up the consultation with me, I okay. want you to email me both decisions, both immigration decisions. The one, well, the one when you withdrew it, where they just said it was withdrawn, and the second one where okay. they claim that you lied. I'm going to read okay. it through, and then we're going to have a consultation and figure out how to make you a citizen, all right? Okay, but there was one thing the guy what? said that really surprised me that what? I knew it's either my race or my nationality that played impact there. I don't. I, be asking, I believe. I believe it. I believe that. I believe. I because, believe. Because he asked one simple question during that interview. He said, "Have you ever been involved in genocide?" I said, "No." Right. He said, "Do you even know what genocide means?" I said, "I'm a graduate. What do you right. mean?" Right. So he looked kind of like. Where are you from? I said, "Why? Where are you from?" I'm from Nigeria. I'm from Nigeria. Nigeria. Right. 
All so right. the, the attorney told me, honest, to be honest with me, he said, this is off the record. Your country, your country of birth plays a whole lot of risk. A whole You're, lot. Guess man. what? Welcome to America. Okay? America, was, America has had race problems since the beginning of time. Okay? Yes, so it absolutely, your race plays into this. You're 100% right. I'm not going to say the particular, I wasn't there at the interview, but I believe what yes. you're saying because I've, I've seen it myself. Okay, so I can't say, oh, that's ridiculous. Of course not. What you're saying may very well be true. Okay, I've even seen situations where, you know, if I've seen immigration officers and and this is either on the record or off the record, I really don't care if even if immigration is watching right now, I've seen immigration officers of the same nationality, you know, uh, people who are, you know, come from the same nationality as the client who's walking in, give, give, give them more of a break than people who, are, who share different nationalities than the person who's interviewed. Yeah, so it goes, right. it goes both ways. So hold, yes, hold on one second. Let's take a look through this. And let, the good news is this. If you refile again, you're going to get a different officer. Okay. And, and, doubt, and, yeah. and hopefully you have a different attorney and, and things work out. So hold on one second. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. 1-800-529-5465. Please share with your friends and family. We want to get back to 350. We'll never show Nashra again, I promise you. Okay, everybody didn't like her. I liked her. But I guess people did it. All right. Never be seen again. She will never be seen again on this show. 1-800-529-5465. We're going to get to Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Why am I calling her Brooklyn Kim? She doesn't even live in Brooklyn. She lives in Harlem. Belgium King. No, it's not Belgium King. That would be uh, Burger King. Belgium Kim. We're going to get to Belgium Kim in about two or three minutes. So please leave your questions on Facebook. Let's go to uh, Fred in Long Island. Fred. Hello. Hey, Brad. Fred. What's up? How are you doing? I'm good. Um, I got a question. Mm -hmm. I came here on a 10-year visiting visa. Now, it, now it's expired and I'm planning to marry someone so I could get the permanent resident card. But that person was in jail for like two years and have a felony. Is that okay for me to do it? All right, well, two things, all right? I always get concerned when it says, I'm gonna go marry somebody to get a green card. You're marrying somebody because you're in love and you happen to need a green card, I'm all for it, okay? Yes. So that's number one. I assume that's the case, okay? Yeah, that's, that's it. Okay, that's now it. number two, now the woman was in jail. What was she in jail for? I think she ended up in some form of fight with somebody. All right, and some sort of assault. Okay, fine. As long as it wasn't any sort of sexual abuse or anything sexually related, abuse, rape, anything like that, you're perfectly fine, okay? Uh, you don't have a criminal record. That's more important. Correct? No, I'm clean. Okay, fine. No, you're fine. You're in love with her. She's a citizen. Absolutely, she can file for you. Hold on one second. I can help you. Okay, Fred? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. 1-800-529-5465. Let's go to Marsha in Plainville, New Jersey. Marsha. Hi, how hey, you doing? what's happening? I'm good. I'm, I'm, my brother has a case, right? He yes. came here on a work permit, a B-1 visa. Right. And he got, um, he met the love of his life. He got married. But when he put in his paperwork, he was arrested on visa fraud. Why? Because they said that, um... He had a case in his back home where that was like 20 years ago. And they're saying that he lied on his visa application. So you said he was arrested for visa fraud or he... Or yes, right now he has a federal case going with the FBI. Wow, okay. So I don't want you to say anything more because there's a criminal case going on. We have criminal defense attorneys who work with immigration attorneys here. He needs a lot of help, all right? Stay, yes. stay, stay right here. I don't want you to say another word. All right. Okay. All right. Can I speak to you personally, though? Yeah, you were going to start the consultation with me personally. Absolutely. One eight hundred five two nine. I mean, if if you have an ongoing criminal case, the last thing I want anybody doing is commenting on it, especially because Facebook is going is it, this is out forever. So we don't want anybody saying anything about any criminal case that's pending against them. Millicent in the Bronx. Hello. How yes. are you? Hi, Brad. How are you doing? Good. I'm What's good. Hi, Squeeze. Squeeze is still good. in the bathroom. I don't know what happened to him. Maybe oh, he drowned in, in the there. bathroom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Maybe yes. he drowned in there. Hi, I don't Brad. Know. Yeah. What's up? Yes. I'm a client anyway. Yeah. I have a friend, right? Right. He went to interview last year. Uh huh. But he have he have a marijuana misdemeanor, ten misdemeanor for marijuana. Right. 
and they turn him down. They turn him down. So I don't, I don't know what he, if he have a, if he have a chance. What was the misdemeanor for? Was it possession? Was it attempted sale? He, like, it's not attempted sale. It was he, possession. He, he, so it was on him. It was on him. If it was more yes. than 30 grams, he can't get a green card. If it was less yeah, than... It, what? Go ahead. But it's 10 times. 10 misdemeanors. He has 10 misdemeanors? Yes. That's oh. what I'm telling you. He got... He, I was telling about you, 10 yeah. misdemeanors. All right, listen, I'm good, but I'm not that good. All right, you got 10, oh, misdeme oh. You got 10 misdemeanors yes. for drugs. But he went for interview last year, and they turned him down. Of course they did. He has 10, in 10 convictions for drugs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you can't get a green card with 10 convictions for drugs. You can't get a green card? No, you have 10 convictions for drugs. 10, not one, not two, 10. They don't give people, can, they don't give people green cards who have 10 convictions for drugs. I'm surprised they didn't arrest them. Oh my God! Okay, yeah, he's bro. got a big problem. All right, okay. tell, tell him to come okay, see me. Thanks. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do to help him, but tell him to come see me. Hold on one second. Okay, I will. All right, all right. Ted, not one. Ted, get arrested ten times. I don't know how someone could be shocked that said, "Oh, how come I didn't get a green card?" All right, one eight hundred five two nine five four six five. James in Brooklyn. James. Hey, but I have a question. Um, yeah, go ahead. My wife, my wife was approved um, for the, the travel document. Right. But she has not got a card in the mail. Can she travel with the letter? Your that she got um, with, with the number there? No, you need the card. Call. No, you need the card. Okay. Okay. If she, if it's an emergency, go down. If not, the card will be in the mail shortly, I assume. But it's an emergency. Death in the family. What, what, what's the emergency? Death in the family. Death. A family, family death? Okay. So then what she needs to do is go down to immigration with, okay, with proof that she has a pending adjustment. Make, go down to immigration tomorrow with a death certificate, proof that she has a pending adjustment with the letter issuing her the advance parole and ask them to issue it right there locally because it never came in the mail and you got to get home for the death, for the, for the funeral. Oh, okay. Okay. So you just walk in? Just go walk in? I think you're going to have to. You don't have a choice. All, All right. right, and if you have a problem, if you have a problem, come see me. All right, thank you. You're welcome. One eight hundred five two nine five four six five. Andre in the Bronx. Yes. Good evening, Brad. Yes. What's up? Yes. Uh, I have a brother, right? Right. He came up here on a regular visa. Uh huh. But I um, mean, overstayed. Right. So now he's overstayed, but uh, his wife is uh, on filing. Mm-hmm. So he's coming up shortly, but he was saying that he's going to wait until she gets up. He's going to marry her, and then he can put his papers in. But I'm not sure how long that's going to take. What do you mean his wife is on filing? Who's filing for the wife? Well, it's, 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 it's his baby mother, rather, not his wife. It's, his baby mother's mom is filing for her. His baby, so her papers are, his baby right. mother's mom. So right. how could a baby mother, somebody who has a child with you, file for you? They would have to be your wife too, no? No, no. What I'm saying is her mom is filing for her. So oh, he's oh, saying oh that I when understand. When she comes up, then he's going to marry her. Yeah, I, right, yeah, it'll right. take about a year and a half, but yeah, and he could do a provisional waiver. It's not, a, not, not, not the worst thing in the world to do. Not so terrible. When, when is she going to be up okay. in the United States? Uh, I think it should be by the summertime or so. Yeah, yeah. No, it's quite plausible to do that. Hold on, and we'll, we'll, we'll help, okay? 1-800-529-5465. Miss DeCalto in Champaign, Illinois. Hello? Did I, did I get that name right? DeCalto? Hello? Hello? Well, well, I'm going to put you on hold and see. I'm going to put you on hold and see if someone can pick up the phone and see if they can get a better connection with her. Let's go to Roman in Little Rock, Arkansas. Little Rock, Arkansas. Hey, hey. Roman, what's up? I'm fine. How you doing, sir? Good, good. What's up? I got a quick question, please. Yeah, go ahead. Um, um, I've been married for, um, what's it called, since 2012. Right. No, I'm sorry. 2013, I'm sorry. 2013, January 25. And um, I was currently working in Buffalo then. And 
I filed for my paperwork. When my did you come to the United documents. States? I came in 2011. In 2011, how did you come to the United States? Um, student visa, F1. Uh, where are you from? Nigeria. Okay, so you came from Nigeria on a student visa. Why were you working in Buffalo? You shouldn't be working on a student visa. What happened? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, I finished my master's. Okay, what were you studying? 2013, 22nd April. What were you studying? Virginia. What were you studying? You mean, I did my master's in Virginia. What did you study? I'm just curious. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, human resources. Human MBA resources. And human resources. Okay, so you have an MBA. Right. You're from Nigeria. Right. You came on a student visa. You got your MBA in 2013. The U.S. government uh, uh, allowed mm. you to come here. And the United States of America mm. gave you a master's mm. in business administration at the University of Virginia, which is a very good school. What happened mm. there? What happened from there? Right. So... Finish and uh, fly for a job. I got a job in Buffalo. So during my school before then, <clears throat> I married. And while I was in Buffalo, I think I worked there for like six months. I started a job in um, September 2013. So it took me till um, 2014 in April. Mm -hmm. So I married my wife. So while I married her, I had to go back home. In between, I had to pull off from my job. Like, let's say I pulled off from my job like in February 2014 because of some emergency back home in my country. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm lost on your story. You got married to a citizen and you went home. Your wife never filed for you? Right, right. Okay, so you're right. back in Nigeria. You got married to a citizen, you go home. So so what's going on? You're, you're in Little right. Rock, Arkansas. How did you come back to America? Oh, yeah. I came back to... I only spent like six months because when I went back on my mom, she passed away. So, because I've not seen her for like three years. How I did you come back to the United she... States of America? So I came with a visitor visa. With a visitor's visa. And did they tell the U.S. government when you applied for this visitor's visa in, in, in Nigeria that you were married to a citizen? Right. Did you? Yes or no? Yes, I did. That's you, what I mean. You, I did. you told them you were married to a citizen. They gave you the visitor's visa. Surprising, but right. okay. I buy anything. Right. Continue. So what's the problem right. today? So, Tell me what your problem is today. Exactly, exactly. So I came, I came, when I came back out of file for my green card, so there was a little bit of, you know, mix up and saying, what did I go to do in my country? I told them what I want to do in my I country. Just, I, just to, I, like, just, I just told you what your problem was. Okay. Had they known that you were married to a citizen and you were coming back to do your green card here, you would never have gotten the visitor's visa because you can't have a visitor's visa for the intent of coming back to get a green card. That's where your problem is. So they're claiming you had misrepresentation issues. That's your problem. Okay. Hold on one second. You're going to need a lawyer. Okay. Hold on. Let's go to, Mi and, and, and by the way, Roman, you need a consultation. Hold on. Okay, let's go to Miss DeCalto. Did we, are we, we got some good, good, good connection now with you? Yes, this is DeCalto. Hi, how are you? Where are you from? All right. She needs, to, she needs, to, uh, if you're going to, by the way, whoever is answering our phones, make sure she has good connection. Shane in Indianapolis, Indiana. Shane, what's up? Hi, good evening. What's up? I have a question yeah, go ahead. regarding the I-130 form. Uh -huh. I was trying to fill it out, but because I have an F-1 student visa, the part where it says um, to enter the date of the expiration for the visa, there is nothing on my sorry I-94 form that has an expiration date. So how... What do I put there? Well, you can go. You can go. You can go on online, and you can Google. Uh, and there's a long website, uh, but you can basically Google DHS I-94 lookup, and it'll tell you when your expiration, when you're supposed to leave, because you can look up your I-94 online now, uh, or you could just assume if it's a visitor's visa and they didn't tell you anything else at the airport, you can assume it's six months from the time you came. Okay. Uh, I have another question. Sure. Since I'm all the way in Indiana, uh -huh. is there uh, a procedure that you guys have where 
you can assist me in yes. filling it out like yes. over the phone? Yes. We do phone consultations <sighs> all throughout the United States and all throughout the world. And what you do uh -huh. is what you do is we'll have a phone consultation with you and whatever work we need to do, we will do for you. And when it comes time for the interview, we will fly out to Indiana and be there with you at the interview. Okay, so right. as far as um, your price range, how, how do I get that detail? I'm sorry? As far as what? As far as prices, how do I get oh, that information? Oh, oh, hold on one second. Hold on one second. All right. Yeah, I don't want, I don't want to scare her and tell her it's $75 million off the top. No, it's not $75 million. Uh, we have very affordable. Actually, to tell you the truth, we have very affordable payment plans. Okay? So after you hire us, your payment plans are generally a couple hundred dollars a month. Most people can afford us. So give us a try. Marita in Brooklyn, New York. Hi, guys. How are you guys doing? Hi. It's just a um, guy right now, but it's okay. How are you? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I'm just going to ask a question. I listen to you guys every day. and uh, I read, you know, far in doing these paperwork just by listening to you guys. Great. So now my husband finally has three weeks for his interview in Jamaica. Um, do I need to resend all those paperwork again to him, like affidavits of support? No, just send, um, just send copies of everything you submitted. Okay, because I thought immigration down there already have it. The they, they have it all. Just send a copy so he knows what he's looking at. So all right, they, thank all right. you guys so okay. much. You're welcome. Thanks. Best of luck to you. All right. Let's go to Marilyn in Queens. Marilyn. Hello. Hi, Marilyn. Hi. What's up? Okay. I have a question. Yes. If you're a permanent resident for many, many years, but you didn't renew your green card, and now you're trying to do it, but you can't, you don't have that renewal, that um, green card number. What do you? How do you get it? If you have, a, you don't have that. You want to renew your green card. You don't have the green card number. Yeah, what, you, you know lost, that number. What happens? You lost the green card. Your A number. You're talking about. Yes. You lost your green card. Yes. And you have no, no, nothing with it, nothing anywhere with, with it, it. On it. Okay. No. How do you, you know you had a green card though, right? Yeah. Okay. So first, I mean, I would try to renew your green card without the alien registration number and hopefully they look it up when they fingerprint you and everything. Just say lost unknown. Okay. Uh, that's, I, that, and what happened? They, they sent it back and but said, you try, I tried doing that online, and but it wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. it. it All right. So come, 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 see, come see me and we can do it for you. Okay. If we have to do it through the mail, we'll do it through the mail. All right, but come oh. on. All right, hold on one second. We got uh, Thanasia in Philadelphia. Did I pronounce that right? Thananisha? Tanasha. Tanasha. Okay, what's up? Hi. So back in December 2016, my husband and I went in for um, a green card interview over right. here in Philadelphia. And we did everything accordingly up until the interview. And when we went in, we were denied because apparently he had a warrant out that we weren't aware of who, who, in Arizona. Who, who was getting the green card? You or your husband? My husband. Okay. I'm a U.S. Citizen okay. So why did he citizen. have a warrant in Arizona? I can imagine. I know well, usually why, but tell well, me. Well, apparently was it drugs? It's not him. Was it drugs? Apparently, it, well, that's what we were told. It's for drugs. Hello. And so we called arizona got everything squared away what and, was the warrant for uh, you're breaking up but what was the warrant for drugs drugs okay as soon as i Failure i don't know why care. but every time there's a warrant in arizona it always ends up being drugs it's just it's just what i see all the time well, yeah to make a long story it's right. not him like we have a disposition letter that oh so it was a mistaken identity exactly oh wow like, Right. So this is like a year ago now. So right. what I wanted to know was, A, do we have to refile the paperwork? Yep, you do. So we have to start all over. Yes, you do. And it's their fault. Oh. And you got to do it all over again. Right. Okay. And I would suggest you have a good lawyer this time so there's no problems. Okay. Right. Because so, the one we had before, yeah, he was a waste of money and time. Yeah, sounds like it. I mean, you know, I never heard of that before. I mean, I heard heard mistaken identity, but I never heard of uh, to such a level where where you know they're you know saying that you are a drug kingpin when you're not. Okay, especially when you take right. fingerprints. And, the, and he had been pulled over by the Philadelphia police. They brought him in um, to the police so station. So he, he shares he shares a name with somebody else. I guess. Okay, yes, and right. the same date of birth, but right, the right. only thing that saved them was his fingerprint. Right, exactly. Because I once had years ago a brother, two identical brothers, and one identical brother was a bad guy, and the other identical brother was actually a decent human being. And uh, the bad identical brother took the uh, 
decent brother's identity and did all this bad stuff. And when the decent brother went in for his interview, they said, you, you've been convicted of 20 different drug offenses. And they arrested him. Oh, okay. And I, and this was, I remember this was one of my first cases ever in my entire life. Imagine me, you know, I'm just like a lawyer less than a year and this is happening to me. And I remember I went ballistic and then I eventually had the FBI come and fingerprint him in jail and they turned out it was the different person. But, you know, there's ways to uh, go about it. Yeah. All right. Hold on. We can help. All right. Okay. All right. All right. 1-800-529-5465. Diego in Des Moines, Iowa. Diego. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Um, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I think you're the only Diego in Des Moines, Iowa, or it's a big immigrant community there? I'm pretty much the only one that yeah, I know I would, about. I would assume. <laughs> that would be my guess. All right. So what's going on, Diego? Uh, I have a quick question. Um, I'm an American citizen now. Uh, and, uh, great. My dad had applied for a visitor's visa for like three times and he got uh, turned down. Why don't you just file so, for his green um, card? Yes, I did. I re- that, that's the point. I already did. He got uh-huh. his green card for Great. you know two years. Mm-hmm. But I know he's here and he's like, Diego, I'm getting old and I want to be old where I'm from. So, okay. so he what- wants to go back to Brazil, but uh, um, you know he cannot stay for too long outside of the U.S. I- so if he goes back, can he get like a visitor's visa? Because yes. that's all he wants. Yes, he wants to yes, visit, yes, you know? yeah, yeah. So what I mean, if you if you go back from if you're an elderly person, you go back to Brazil or any country in the world and you walk into Mm -hmm. the U.S. Embassy in Brazil and say, here's my green card. I'm giving it up. I don't want to live in the United States anymore. I would like a visitor's Mm -hmm. visa to go visit every so often. Mm -hmm. What more proof do you have that you're not going to live in America than I'm giving up my green card? Because that's all you really exactly. need to prove. It's all you need to prove to get a visitor's visa. So I, in in ninety nine point nine percent of the time, I, I've actually in my in my career, I've actually never seen them say no. But I'm sure uh-huh. I'm sure there's been a time where somebody said no. But in in my career, right. I've, you walk in, you exchange, you can always exchange a green card for a visitor's visa. Oh, great, great, yeah. It will right. be good news for right. him because he uh, yeah he just wants to, to to come and visit. And if there's any and problem, then, give us a call. What what else do you have? No, no, that, that's it. That's, that's all the question I had. That's, okay. uh, that's what I needed to know to, to let him live. Thank Wonderful. you. So Thank very you very much. much. Okay. All right. Um, bye. 1-800-529-5465. Daniel in Gary, Indiana. Hey, good evening. Good evening. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, I've been here for a while. Uh, right. I applied when I just came. I came in 2011. I got married in 2011. And I filed in 2012. Me and my wife, she, she petitioned for me in 2012. I got my green card, but when I was doing the application, I, I, I added both of my sons on there. But the question that I wanted to ask now, I'm a citizen. I'm a citizen right now. But your wife the filed. Is, your wife was a citizen who filed for you. Yes. Okay. So when you when your spouse files for you and you and they ask the question, what are the names of your children? The your yes. children are not included on that case. Your wife would okay. have had to have filed separate applications for them. Okay, so my, my son is 18 right now. Uh-huh. If, I, if I choose to petition for my son and, and he's 18 right now, how long would it take Where is he? for him to get here? Where is he? Where is he, he? he? He's originally from Jamaica, but he's not in Jamaica now. He's staying with his mom in Trinidad. Okay, uh, it should take less than two years. You want to do it now because it's about two years and you need to get him his green card before he turns 21. So do it right now. Okay, well, I lost him. Let's see if I can find him back, Daniel. Daniel, you, I'm sorry. Yes. Do it right now, okay? Okay. Uh, and you got to get him here before he's 21, so you can't you can't fool around on that one. Okay, so I got to get on top of it right now. Get right on top of it right now, exactly. File right, the man, I-130 right now. Appreciate okay, it. best of luck. Hold on if you need help. Let's go to uh, Colleen in Newark, New Jersey. Colleen. Hi, good night. Good night, what's up? All right, so I am Buffalo. You're I'm a Buffalo? A- yes, what, what do you mean, I'm Buffalo. Buffalo. Oh, no, Buff Love. You're the Buff Love. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. You sound, right. You sound buffy and lovey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You made me laugh. All right. What's up? All right. So my they, my daughter, father, he was home, and they come and they pick him up because they, they, they say he overspent his time. Right. But he had also, like, while he was here, he got locked up. For what? And he had a case going on where they charge him, and they give him a year to stay in Rikers, but... As how immigration hold him already. They so so he, has a, he has a pending criminal case, but he's never but been convicted of a crime. Him, no, but they gave him the year for Rikers, but Rikers didn't take him. They, they sent him back to immigration. Okay, Does he, has he been convicted of a crime or he's never been convicted of a crime? No, he didn't. Okay, so convicted. then he can get bail. If he's never been convicted of a crime, you could be charged with 100 crimes. 
If you've never been convicted of a crime, come, hold on. Right, come, wait, wait, okay, what what's the problem? By, uh, what, what do, do I mean by convicted? You went to court and the judge says you're guilty. Did oh, that he happen? He pleaded guilty. Okay, he pled guilty to what? Okay, that's a different story now. The, they hold him with marijuana. Okay, how many times? I uh, think twice. Okay, so that's what's making him deportable. You got to come see me like ASAP. Hold on, okay, ASAP. All right. All right hold on. All right.